So today's main ingredients are sirloin and bacon. What could possibly go wrong? Thanks for joining us today. So we've been working through this series. We're trying to understand North American food today, and we're going back into history, and we're looking at these other cultures that influence our cooking today. This recipe is from 1787. It's from a German cookbook, the kind of cookbook that possibly uh, German immigrants would have brought with them. And you can definitely tell it's related to our cooking today. Let me read to you this recipe. Now, this is translated it's translated by the folks down at Winston-Salem at the old Salem site. Uh, they've done a tremendous job. They've got a couple of these cookbooks, and they're kind of translating through them. I'm not sure if this is published yet, uh, but we've got one of these pre uh, pre-works here. So let me read to you. This one's actually called roast sirloin in a sauce. And um, I'll just read to you the top part. We'll get to the sauce later on. You will thickly cut some bacon and ham. In a dish, lay the pieces of bacon out and lay the meat on top of it. Add some salt and pepper. Use a whole onion and some root vegetables, bay leaves, some wine. Cover it up and set it on a small amount of embers. Be sure to turn it often when it is cooked and yellow. Make some, um, make some little flour yellow and put it in the broth. Okay, so obviously <laughs> these uh, directions certainly need some interpretation after the interpretation. Uh, it's one of those um, uh, tricky things. Kind of, we're trying to look at sort of um, difficult to understand uh, German writing from the 18th century, and then you know, twist it into English. And we also have the historical way that they would have written out recipes. So, we've got to do some interpretation here. So today, the cut of beef we're using here, we're using a. This one was listed as a London broil. We want something that would be a pot roast type of piece of meat that we're gonna be, we need a nice big thick chunk. And of course I've got some nicely thick cut bacon. We're going to use a Dutch oven for this baking. This is the perfect uh, sort of dish to use a Dutch oven with it. They didn't get really specific, but obviously we, they called for something that had a close fitting lid. That's the important part of this dish. We need something that has a nice close fitting lid to keep this uh, moisture and juices in. So let's start to assemble this. We've got our Dutch oven here. Uh, kind of pick a size that's gonna work for the cut of meat that you've got. First thing that goes in here is the bacon. We're gonna take our big thick slices of bacon, we're gonna place and sort of make a bed of bacon in the bottom of this. So we've got our bacon bed laid down there. Now we're gonna put in our cut of beef here and we'll just lay it right on top of that bacon. And now we have uh, let's see, it calls for some salt and pepper. So we've got some salt here. And obviously you get to choose about how much you'd like. I enjoy my pepper, so we're gonna pepper that nicely. Uh, if you really want, you could uh, add some other spices in here that you think would go well with the meat. Uh, something that might be common in the English cookbook would be even nutmeg in a, in a dish like this. I'm not gonna put in nutmeg this time. Now it's time for the root vegetables. Uh, we've got some common ones here. I've got some carrots, we've got some turnips and parsnips. Uh, cut those up into you know medium -ish small pieces here so that they're gonna cook well. And I'm just gonna sprinkle those around the outside edges here, getting them spread out nicely. After the root vegetables, we have our onion. We're just gonna leave that whole. That's just in here for flavor and then we'll take it out and we're gonna pour in some wine to kind of fill this up and about a cup or so of wine in here. I'm using a, a, a sherry, which in the time period they would have called a sack wine, very common in cooking. They didn't specify the wine in this particular recipe, so I'm just going to a, a classic for the 18th century, which is a sack. This is ready to go on the fire. We're gonna make sure our lid fits on well and take this and put it over our coals. So we need a small bed of coals. I've got some coals already cooking along here. We're gonna separate out um, some coals, kind of make a ring of coals that we're gonna set this on. We don't want the center bottom to get too hot. And this is a slow cook. And so we're not going to have a whole bunch of coals underneath here. We're gonna to have to play around with this. This is, I mean, if we're cooking in a Dutch oven. If you're doing this in, an, in a regular oven in your modern home, hey, you're just gonna place your Dutch oven 
in the oven, set the temperature at about 325 and let it go for a couple hours, uh, depending on the thickness of your cut of meat. But this one, uh, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to take care of it a little bit more and watch it. So I've got a smallish bed of coals going here. Okay, uh, now we have to go ahead and put a few coals around the top here to keep this heat coming in from the top as well as the bottom. We probably wanna have a few more on the top uh, than we actually had on the bottom. Even in our Dutch oven, in our fireplace, or out in the field, this can easily be cooked out in the field. Uh, uh, we need to continue to watch this. It's gonna take another, you know, approximately two to three hours, depending on the thickness. And there's the other direction there that it said to make sure to continue to turn it. That was right there in the directions. Uh, that's one of the classic things. You can kind of tell what, what kind of uh, pot they intended you to cook this in. Because of the type of cooking, low and slow with the coals, you have to occasionally pick up your pot and turn it uh, sort of 90 degrees, uh, say once every five or 10 minutes so that it gets a very even heating underneath. And we can even do that with the top where we can turn the bottom one direction, turn the top the other direction so it continues to get a very even heat. Of course, if you're using a modern oven, you don't have any problems like that at all. We're making the sauce now, and this is a little bit different than the ones we've done in the past. The base of this sauce is uh, sour cream. So it says a few spoonfuls of sour cream. Let me get some sour cream going on here. We don't, again, no, no measurements whatsoever here. So uh, we've got a few spoonfuls of sour cream. It says to also add some lemon juice. So I've got the juice of one lemon here. And it also says this a few lemon slices. I'm not sure whether in the, uh, in the original language it actually meant the zest of a lemon or the peel of a lemon, or I'm just gonna go ahead and go with the directions here and just put a couple of slices of lemon in it. I know it seems a little strange. And then, um, again, oddly, certainly not what we would do in a modern recipe, uh, it says sugar to taste. Again, okay, let's add some sugar. Of course, sugar to taste means however much we think is appropriate. I'm gonna put about hmm, a teaspoon, maybe two teaspoons full in here. Let me take this over to the fire, put it on a very gentle heat and bring this up to a very low simmer. That should be about right. After two and a half or three hours, this meat should be nice and tender. Let's remove the meat and the vegetables from our pot add a little bit of water or beer, and then sprinkle a little bit of flour in that. We're making a nice gravy. Leave this on the fire just a very short amount of time. When it thickens up, we can go ahead and put that on our meat to keep it nice and moist. Well, this smells tremendous. And this sauce that they had us make up, this white sauce, very, very interesting. Certainly nothing like I've done before. I can't wait to try this. I mean, really, smells good. These, these vegetables look so rich and the meat looks great. So let's give it a try. Hmm. Wow. that white sauce very very interesting because it's got that that lemon juice comes in there and gives us a little bit different flavor almost like a vinegar would would uh, do in this uh, along with this white sauce it makes it very very rich and of course we've got these wonderful soft you know vegetables that have been infused with this meat flavor and of course we had that gravy that they had us you know make in the bottom of the pot to pour over the top so it's like really two sauces in one or sharing it so we can you know switch from one to the other tremendous flavor and doesn't hurt having a little bacon in the bottom of the pot right so this recipe was tremendous if you'd like to learn more about dutch oven cookery this video is tremendous and i'll see you over there